обещала тусоваться с вами целый час. Я выполняю свои обещания, не то что некоторые. I promise to be with you the whole hour. I'm keeping my promise. Что-то как-то у нас мало событий происходит. But we don't have a lot of attacking events. Экскурс в необычные темы, интересные. Let's continue talking about interesting and unusual topics. And from space ships flying in outer space, we're flying to the theater. О том, как сложные технические. And we're going to speak about how complicated technical, not interesting topics can be presented to people in such a way, so that they can be astonished. They would become happy and start acting. So we will speak how technical topics can be brought to TED speech. And I have two guests here. I'm really happy to see you, Oksana Trutskova. Hello. In order for you to understand who you're speaking to, Oksana is TED X Pokrovka Street. Yes, I remember. And Alexey Novikov. Who's going to speak? Сумел пропихнуть свою тему. Was able to promote his topic, very complicated topic, to this TED speech. Twice. Twice. Yeah, twice. He was able to do it twice, and it's not a limit. So I wanted to discuss this with you, the situation, Oksana. I hope you're going to tell us, do we need topics like that? And do people expect news from the world of cyber business and cyber technologies? Yes, of course. Organizers wait for something like that. And if you will look at organizer as the architect of the event, and take into consideration the fact that this event should uh, contain information about all the spheres. So technologies are something new, constantly developing, has a quotation or a quota for this uh, technical presentation. But organizers usually go to people that everybody hear about. Of course, I would like to call Edward Snowden, if I would have a choice, uh, or maybe who else is very popular? David Young, Evgeny Cherishnev, those that everybody know. Everybody heard Ivan Sachkov until recently, Ilya. Ilya. But everybody else, they speak about themselves. Uh, they speak about themselves through their own brand, uh, and then they come to TEDx, uh, or maybe they have to write to the organizers. And of course, uh, we want to know, people want to know, because this is where the future is. Do I probably understand you <clears throat> that these topics, they have to be carried by well-known people, or maybe people who are well-known and who are super professionals in their topic, they can also speak at the TEDx and be interesting speakers there and become interesting uh, for the organizers. Well, for the organizers, it's not always uh, uh, understandable to all the technologies, but these topics have to be presented. But another topic is how many of those ideas inside of the cybersecurity topic or technologies and everything else. I think that we can dig very deep because we've been speaking about the robots, will they enslave us or not if it's not going to be punished? And then we've been speaking about the data that should be treated properly. Everybody speaks about it. So the one who wants to speak, he needs to search for a new aspect of the same topic. Lyosha, can you tell us how you've been uh, looking for the new aspect when you've been getting ready for the TEDx? Alexei participated on the TEDx two times and you had topics about what? <laughs> it was a long time ago, it was something very popular. It was about personal confidentiality and how can you treat your own pictures, where you can lose your personal confidentiality and how can this be negative to us, which threats we can see. The first presentation was an overview presentation and then I, I tried to say that 
Cyber security is very important, and we can't even imagine which consequences this cyber security from cameras, from your phones, from computers, from the internet devices. It can lead us to very real negative consequences in the physical world when people have been losing their apartments, they were not able to enter their smart houses because they were tuned improperly. What do you think? And it's a task. It's a task for you. Your favorite combination of words uh, from your work life. Computer incidents. Okay, something else. In this combination, there are two words. I begin, one uh, begins with T, another with H. Threat hunting. Threat hunting. So. The task. Oksana is with us and we are the examination team. You have a task. You should invent how you're going to tell us about threat hunting in such a way so that it would become interesting, that would be exhilarated and we would think that this topic is worthy of TED speech. Threat hunting. It's very difficult for Oksana. She doesn't know what it is. Well, I know these two words. Informational security, this is a separate area of activity, it's very important activity, because the most important activity in threat hunting is to make a hypothesis for specific infrastructure, specific company, for maybe industry. In the area of informational security, to make a hypothesis, and this hypothesis usually related to the question of discovery of uh, fraudsters inside of the infrastructure, and then you start to check this uh, hypothesis, and you have to try retrospectively look at whether there was a penetration of a criminal in the infrastructure, if it was or was not. Is it a truthful hypothesis? Maybe it has to be specified or improved. And thanks to these, you should find in infrastructure those hackers that you were not able to discover previously. And when this hypothesis works once, then the process is built in such a way so that this hypothesis should work continuously. And ideally, it should become a new detector, new knowledge of informational security product and it would search for hackers without humans. <laughs> okay, can you repackage this term? Can you tell us a story about it? <laughs> we can give him 15 seconds to think about it. Well, first of all, you can use some metaphorical statement, a bright example for dummies. Which idea comes to your mind? Well, it's not the most important thing, but this explanation of something, it's a good thing in simple words about complicated things. But what is also important is to show the usefulness for the one who is listening. Well, the usefulness for the one who is listening. Let's flip this story to another side, because honestly speaking, at a given moment of time, the information security market has a big uh, thirst for qualified employees and a thirst for those people who are burning for their work and they love to work. And many people, when you speak about computer, computer security, information security, and when you speak about this technology, many people think that this is boring, not interesting, mathematics, physics, <laughs> some complicated technical skills. But honestly speaking, it's not like that. Honestly speaking, it involves colossal field for creativity and threat hunting is one of those elements related with creativity. So speaking in analogies, make a hypothesis that I want to fly from one mountain to another mountain. Which wings I need for that? For the first time, you can select unsuccessful form of the wings and you die. But uh, usually you try, 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 try until you discover something new, which is going to become useful, become important. And this is a colossal element of creativity. It's a very important charge for your brain. And... Uh, 
Very often, even people who can find parallels between different spheres of life, they can. Because what about digital technologies? Well, digital technologies is the mirror of our real life. That's what digital technology is. And honestly speaking, we have to transfer those things uh, in which we have skills in our daily life into the uh, digital life. Same for the threat hunting. We need to discover uh, uh, threats. Uh, for example, when somebody approaches us in the street, can I look at your wallet? How much money do you have in your wallet? Well, how much money? <laughs> can you give me your phone number to make a call? Well, that's another one. And uh, everybody understands it. Uh, everybody makes an assessment. Uh, but in some cases, you can give a mobile phone to a person. Maybe really something bad happened with the person and this person needs to make a call. So we do know how to make assessments. And during the evolution, we know how to make assessments. Is it truth or not truth? But when in the messenger somebody writes you, can you give me your phone number of your email address? Please follow the link, give the password and login. Doesn't include those factors. So how can we transfer these factors from real world into digital world? And how by using these factors we can discover criminals? Well, the flight uh, of the bumblebee, the flight of the creativity. Interesting topic. In your conversation, Alexei, uh, I've heard five different directions which can be divided into five different speeches. The most beautiful things already have been verbalized. You should have one idea and one topic and some specific steps which users should make here and now because they are not going to remember two ideas, three ideas. But it's an interesting topic, especially if you have invented. Well, information security. Well, it is so interesting because it might involve this, this and that. We have a lot of fun here. Oksana, can you tell me, please, is it difficult? Because when you evaluate who's going to be included into the program, which criteria do you use uh, for the future speakers? Should they be known people or the topic should be interesting? Well, well known people, it's, if there is a topic you know nothing about it through the authority, you will definitely be able to convey this message to everybody else. But usually I have three criteria. First, the availability of the idea, because even if it's a cool, well-known speaker, but he has no idea that he wants to share with other people, then we don't have this presentation. But what is idea? Can you give me an example of an idea? Well, I do have the ideas while sitting here. Idea which can be packaged into a Twitter statement, which is a short but not basic. For example, if you take a speech of one of my favorite and one of the well-known TED speeches, uh, Ken Robinson about the school, his idea that the modern school kills creativity and we have to change it. Very good idea. But then through stories, through personal examples, he tells us it in such a way so that we look at his presentations and we cry and we say that, yes, the school has to be changed and I will start today with my kids. I will treat them differently. I will follow their individuality. So it should uh, lead to a certain action, not necessarily, but at least... Uh, it should be verbalized. If you can verbalize something, it means that you have understood it and remembered it. The second thing is the expert, expertness. It's not necessarily that this person should be a mega superstar like Elon Musk. Yes, of course, it would be wonderful, but it's not necessary. And it's sufficient if you work in a sphere which is connected with your idea. And if Alexei, for example, is going to write to the organizers of anybody and he said, I will speak about the flight uh, uh, to the Mars. What the Mars has to do with it? Are you flying to the Mars? Are you researching the topic of the Mars? <laughs> well, the previous speaker was from Mars. So the expertness should be related to the topic. This could be a number of publications. This could be some... I don't know, patents, uh, which you have had in your sphere, maybe inventions you've had in it. And the earlier a person starts working in his brand, the better it is for other people in other spheres. And number three, some presentation skills, at least basic. It's not a commercial conference. So we want to keep a balance between efforts that you spend for preparing the speaker and the result. Is it difficult to prepare a speaker? Yes and no. If the speaker wants to get ready, nothing difficult in there. But if he doesn't want, he will never come to you. 
There are complicated stories when we have very strong public relations manager and he says, well, we're going to prepare with somebody else, good person, good topic, uh, but not something is not working. So if the person has no desire to invest into the training, nothing's going to work. Да. Do you agree? Yes, I do. Yes, I agree. Нет. Какой вопрос, такой ответ. Well, the question you ask, the answer you get. Тяжело, наверное, на самом деле. It is difficult to stop speaking technological language and try to explain in simple words, in understandable words, in analogies, especially to those people who understand nothing in the computer security and things that you do or why it might be important to them. So a selection of these words, proper uh, metaphorical comparisons, this is the most complicated part. When I was thinking that we have to talk with the, to each other, I've googled what presentations we might have, especially those related with cybersecurity on TED, and I've discovered three big areas. One of them is confidentiality and personal data. The second area, everything which is related with our favorite gadgets, all this stuff. And direction number three about uh, how cool are those hackers? So both of you, tell me please, what do you think, why these three topics? Well, speaking about the end users, uh, they ask themselves a question, why am I listening this? Because maybe uh, something complicated and it's very difficult to build connection with the end user. And maybe a state commercial secret, nobody have prohibited in any country. Technologies are developing very fast. Uh, they're entering the area of strategic interests of those countries where they are invented. So there should be a proper balance between all those things. Don't you think that people don't know anything? And that you have to tell and speak about new stories. Maybe I need to explain. But there's an interesting for a person what he understands and something that is closer to him. So if you will speak about some peculiarities of highly loaded systems, discovering on a flight, uh, something, 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 something. Even you are not going to be interested in such a speech. So if you build connection between usefulness, then, of course, it's going to be interesting. But these are topics which are on the surface. That's why when the cream was removed from the surface, there will be people desiring going deeper into these topics and tell us something new, something more accessible, something more difficult in a more accessible language. Well, I have a philosophical question to both of you. Let's try to philosophize. Why? Why you do what you do? Do you do TED? And why she doesn't, why do you participate in this TED? Who's going to be the first one? I'm going to be the first one. Well, Ted, I'm really confident that events like these TEDx are changing our society around. They make people better. They help people to get expressed, uh, for ideas to be expressed. I uh, see, I'm looking at speakers who've been speaking in front of us, and I see how this speech helped them and many of them saying that, well, it was so important for me, I wrote a book, uh, it helped me to express myself, it helped me to receive certain support. So it's, uh, it's a human growth. Yeah, somehow it is. And it's always nice to be in the company of same thinkers, good and cool people. So it's a community that you build around yourself. It's always wonderful. At the same time, looking at what I do in my work, I separate it as a hobby. 
На самом деле, когда ты говоришь о том, ради чего ты это делаешь, создаешь сообщество. But when you say why do you do that, you create a community of people who are interested in working with each other. So we in security, we work like you. Интересных людей, которым We find interesting people who are interested in talking to each other. It's an interesting concept. It really has touched me, and I will think about it for quite a while. Why did you apply those efforts to speak there? Well, it's a new experience, TEDx, getting out of the comfort zone. And second of all, cybersecurity, it's kind of a box in itself, but we are all boiling in this box together with each other. We're communicating the bird language and we're not leaving this box. But there's a good analogy with the rules of the road. Because as soon as cars started appearing here, we have evolved as a vision. And the person has learned a lot of words. This is zebra, this is the light, street light. <clears throat> Digital technology has penetrated into our lives so much that when a person receives smartphone in his hands, he should have a dual factor authorization, etc., etc. And if we being in this box, we're not going to tell the rest of the world about it. The world is not going to change. But if the world is not going to change, these bad hackers will become more and more successful in making their, their cyber crimes. And it's going to be much more difficult for us to win them and make this world more secure. <laughs> so the laziness uh, moves the progress to work less, uh, to work easier. So let's try to educate our users so that they wouldn't press all the links plus 25% to your discount. Thank you very much. My dear friends, today I was visited by Aksana Protskova. Aksana, thank you very much, the organizer of TEDx. Please Google it. Google her in social networks. <coughs> Partially prohibited on the territory of our country, but go from another state. Lexi Novikov, if you would like to see what's interesting he was going to tell you on the TEDx. And please don't forget that each one of you is a lot of interesting topics. And you can tell us about them. Don't be afraid. Disclose new horizons and enter new doors, including TED. I'm going to be happy to see cybersecurity, more of cybersecurity. And right now I would like to give studio to Vladimir Zapolyansky, but he's going to stay here alone in a couple of minutes, but alone. And he's going to be joined to online. He's going to be joined by Alexei Yudin, Kiwi, and they're going to discuss uh, cybersecurity problems, fintech in new realities. I think it's also a topic for TED.